all you cool cats and kittens. <laughs> I'm sorry, I couldn't resist. Anyways, um, today we are going to be discussing all um, our third principle of design, which is going to be rhythm. And I will be giving you a, another design assignment. And then we will move on to emphasis and harmony in the, the following lessons. So follow along with me. Make sure you have your notes out and you are filling these in as we go. We'll have a short lesson on rhythm and then we will talk um, and then I'll give you the assignment and then you'll be good to go. So rhythm is our third principle of design that we'll be discussing. And rhythm is uh, the pleasing arrangement of the design element so the eye moves easily over the apparel. Basically, what I want you guys to think about is that whenever you look at somebody's outfit, like you, you are trying to create a judgment on this outfit or a first impression on this outfit, you are going to look over the details of this outfit. And the way that your eye moves is how the rhythm is portrayed. Uh, certain outfits have certain types of rhythm that help your eye move a certain way easily over the apparel. So rhythm directs the flow of the eye movement steadily and smoothly through the lines and spaces of the design. The gaze unconsciously moves from one part to another. You don't necessarily realize you're doing it. It's kind of subconsciously that your eye moves across the design, but the rhythm is how your eye does move. Uh, rhythm can be created with repetition, gradation, transition, opposition, or radial arrangements. So there are five different types. I will show you examples of each of these types, and then I will give you an assignment. So first we have rhythm by repetition. This is um, when lines, shapes, colors, or textures in a garment are repeated. So it does not necessarily have to be a pattern. It can be actual certain details. So if you look at the design on the right side of the girl, you can see uh, a few things being repeated in this design. Uh, and they're not ever a pattern. It's actually with the details of how the garment is put together with the ruffles. Okay, so the ruffles are being repeated in this design. Uh, this can be done using the same shaped edges on all parts. These edges could be rounded or scalloped, and repetition of colors can create good rhythm, especially if the colors are distributed in an interesting way. Rhythm can be repeated, um, sorry, rhythm by repletion can be achieved by repeating buttons, tucks, pleats, or trim. So it can be very simple. Uh, any button-up shirt shows repetition because the multiple buttons on a shirt, and so on and so forth. Um, here we have a couple of examples. The the design on the left, the man in the sweatsuit, his design's being repeated. He has repetition being shown in a couple of different ways. Number one, with the stripes. That's a really easy thing to call out. And then also the colors white and black are being repeated um, over and over again. In the next design, the middle girl, you can see that her uh, design is using repeat, repetition by uh, polka dots and also by the suede elbow patches. The next design actually has three. Uh, you have the floral design in the shirt is being repeated, as well as the stripes in the skirt, as well as the scalloped hem. Next, we have our rhythm by gradation. Uh, this can also be called progression, but I always call it gradation. So um, I will never ever call it progression. I just I was taught it. I was taught it being called gradation, so that's what I use. But if you do use the word progression, that is fine. Uh, this type of rhythm implies a gradual increase or decrease of similar design elements. So basically it means colors can go from light to dark or textures can go from fine to coarse. Lines may range from thick to thin and shapes may range from small to large. The gradual change provides continuity, continuity, <laughs> you know what I'm saying, while giving a feeling of movement. The design on the left side, the woman in the dress, uh, you can tell that the design is using gradation because the color goes from a dark purple and it slowly fades into a tan at the bottom and, it, and it's using gradation to do that. Next, we have some more examples. Uh, the, the first dress on the left is also doing the gradation by colors. It goes from black to brown um, slowly. And then the second one, the textures are changing from smooth to coarse using the pants and then the sweater. And then the next one is also using color. Actually, the next two are using colors. The ombre effect in the shirt that the man is wearing and then the ombre effect of the dress that Kate Hudson is wearing. Okay, then we have rhythm by transition. Transition is a fluid rhythm created by curved lines that lead the eye over an angle. 
The curved lines of transition cause the eye to change direction gradually rather than abruptly. And transition can be found in puffed sleeves, dropped shoulders, designs, etc. And transition can also be achieved by using scarfs, shawls, ascots, jabots, ruffles, and gathers. You can see that the uh, rhythm by transition is being used here on the drop sleeve top as well as the puffed sleeves. Here it is being shown with the transition of the drop shoulder halter top that the woman is wearing on the left. And then the next two pictures, it's being used with the scarves. Okay, then we have rhythm by opposition. This is created when lines meet to form right angles. So it can be found in checks, plaids, square necklines, square pockets, waistbands, yokes, collars, and cuffs. Basically anything that's square can show rhythm by opposition. It's being shown in the picture on the right with the man in the plaid or checked shirt. Because it's not really plaid because it's only one color. Checked shirt. Hmm. Okay, here we have uh, the woman in the overalls on the left. She is showing rhythm by opposition in the square neckline as well as the square pockets. And then the man in the middle is using it with the plaid jacket. And then the man on the right is using it with the square pocket as well as the dividing line in between the gray and the black on the shirt. Okay, here we have some more plaid dresses or plaid skirts. And then the last picture is, uh, you see it in the square neckline, the crop top, and as well as the square shape of the mini skirt. Okay. Rhythm by radiation, this is a radial, radial arrangements are when lines emerge from a central point like rays. It is created when gathers, tucks, seams, or darts, flowing lines, or colors fan out from a central area. So if we were in class, I would ask you where the central point is on this woman's outfit, but I'll just have to tell you since no one can respond to me. But um, it is where her belly button is, is where the center point is. And then the way that the skirt is ruched it is creating lines flowing out in a downward fashion. And so that is rhythm by radiation. Radiation. Here we have it, uh, Nicole Kidman at the CMA Awards a couple of years ago. She wore it with her pink velvet dress. The uh, point of focus is going to be her bust area. And then it fans out in every direction uh, using the knot in the dress. Same with Kate Beckinsale's dress that she wore to an event. You can see that the point of focus is going to be her belly button or her waist, and it also fans out in every direct, well, most every direction. It doesn't really fan upwards, but it fans outwards and downwards with her dress. And then you have the twist tie knot type style in the t-shirt, and it's creating lines moving upwards. Okay, here we have a couple of more. You can see that the area of interest on the girl in the green dress is going to be on her side or her hip, and it's creating lines moving upwards and downwards. And then we have this ruched type sweater that you can kind of control how much ruching you want based on, it looks like the black ties can pull, and you can either make it go very dramatic or a little bit more slight, but it looks like the lines move in an outward fashion because of the ruching of the sweater. Okay, so here is your assignment that you'll be working on this week. You are going to create one design. Your design needs to display one of the types of rhythm that we discussed, so radiation, repetition, opposition, transition, or gradation. So as an example for radiation, you can do any type of uh, design that creates a knot or ruching of some kind that create lines going outward. Repetition can be anything from repetition of stripes, repetition of color, repetition of polka dots, repetition of patterns, anything like that. Opposition can be, you basically can do anything plaid, anything checked. It can also go from white to black or light color to dark color with no transition whatsoever. Uh, square pockets, square necklines. Uh, transition can be anything with a curved line. So um, it can be a drop shoulder. It can be a ruched top. It can be a peplum hem. It can be a puff sleeve. It can be scarfs anything like that. And then gradation can be from lines going from thin to thick. It can be from colors going to light to dark, anything like that. Uh, your design needs to be fully sketched and colored. Take a photo of your design and add it to your unit three design PowerPoint that you will be submitting. Your unit three design PowerPoint will have your extra credit assignment if you decided to do that. That is your, um, your non-proportional model. 
your balance design and your rhythm design. You will submit the full PowerPoint with all of your designs at the end of this unit, just like we would in class. So as you finish each design, what I want you guys to be doing is taking a photograph of the design and putting it in a PowerPoint. That way, um, when you finish your last design, you can just include it on your last slide and then your PowerPoint is completely finished. You click save and you save it as a PDF, please. And you submit it into Canvas when I open up that assignment. And then that will be your full unit three. We'll then start unit four and then our final unit will be unit five. Um, if anyone has any questions, please um, send me an email. I do post announcements on Canvas uh, frequently, so you guys know what's going on for the week and stuff, but I do not get notifications when you comment on those posts, so please, if you have a question, send me a message in Canvas or send me an email. I do get those on my phone. That way I can answer you immediately, whereas if you post a comment asking a question, it can take me quite a few days to see that, and I may have missed the window that you needed me to answer your question in. So please send me a message or send me an email. That will get a much faster response from me, usually within that same hour as how fast I respond. So um, if you have any questions, just let me know. And that is your lesson on rhythm and your assignment. I miss you all so very much, and I hope that you guys have a good week, and next week we will move on.